Yes, we are doing two games in one video. Honestly, if I were to do separate videos on these two games, then they were rather short. The problem is that I want to talk more about these games than I did on my many, many, many scripts I've wrote. So basically, you can say that two game reviews have been in development hell. The solution? Just uh, um, mash the scripts together. Yeah, I guess that does it. Anyways, today we are covering Half-Life Opposing Force and Half-Life Blue Chef, the only expansion packs of Half-Life available on Steam. Well, let's start with the former. Half-Life Opposing Force is the first expansion pack for Half-Life, released in 1999, not developed by Valve, but by Gearbox. He assumed the role of Adrian Shepherd, a soldier whose mission is still unknown to him. And just like any Half-Life protagonist that is in the vicinity of Black Mesa, Adrian is trapped here and his objective is to escape this place. Alongside Adrian, we meet some of his people. These soldiers can provide some more firepower and can help you progress through the game. They're fine. I honestly don't mind them, but it's not like they have like a significant importance for the story nor are they <clears throat> very good in combat. The only good soldier that I can think of is the medic, which can heal you for a small amount of HP. There's also an engineer who can open locked doors. I don't find them useless, but it's not like they can provide good value. I only need them to progress in certain sections, but aside from that, these guys kinda suck. Most of the weapons from Half-Life 1 return in this game, alongside new weapons as well. In the melee department, we have a knife and a wrench. The knife has a faster attack animation compared to the wrench, which has a slower one. I like that we get a choice here, but I much prefer having one melee weapon that I can reliably use whenever the situation arises. Such as, you know, a crowbar. We get a traditional sniper rifle that does get the job done. Basically a minigun in the form of a machine gun that shreds through everything and proves to be a valuable weapon whenever the game actually decides to give you ammo for it. The Desert Eagle there is pretty good and also comes with a laser pointer to provide better accuracy in your shots. The Spore Launcher is a weapon that you feed for it to shoot what can possibly be described as grenades with splash damage. A barnacle grapple are honestly probably the most useless weapon in the entire game. It's not devoid of use, it's just that this is a weapon that with a super niche use and it's also easily missable since I still haven't found this goddamn thing. Please, where the fuck is it? The shock roach, which is an enemy, and a gun at the same time. Once you obtain it, the uh, shock roach becomes a regular enemy and it's not that good as a weapon. And lastly, the displacer cannon, which is complete other shite. It uses way too much ammo for it to be a viable option in every combat to just poof your enemies into a zen. You're better off just using your other weapons most of the time. Enemy variety wasn't really Half-Life's A game, but not only do every enemy from Half-Life come back in opposing force, they also introduce new enemies. Firstly, we have the Nintendo Ninja's Mail Edition, not as acrobatic as the female counterpart, I might add. The Race X Aliens, which includes Dorito ostriches that can also shoot you from a certain range. Dogs but fat and big. Alien grunts, but not as powerful as uh, the actual alien grunts. The Shock Roach, which is a discount headcrab alien. And lastly, the zombie counterpart from Marine Soldiers. They are uncommon, not your regular enemy. And they can be pretty annoying sometimes. Let's talk about boss fights. This game features two boss fights, and in my opinion, both of them suck ass. First, we have the Worm, who loves deep frying itself in acid. You just have to press some buttons, make some chums, and that's it. I don't even know if I can classify it as a mini boss fight. Lastly, we have another Worm, but this time, there is more going on around this fella. That being said, this boss fight is kind of pathetic. Half the damage his eyes to shoot at his core, I guess. Half-Life never really had good boss fights, at least in its earlier games. It goes without saying that the Zen levels are crap and that's all I'm going to say about them. Instead of the flashlight, we get night vision goggles. Ah uh, yes, perfect, a shittier version of a flashlight. Yeah, this sucks, you can barely see shit with this thing. More like you can see two feet in front of you. I'll gladly take one shitty cold source flashlight, please. Multiplayer is back and surprisingly, there are people who play the version of the Deathmatch. I was surprised to find myself with a bunch of people in it, and I had my fair share of fun for like 8 minutes, and that's it. 
Lastly, in my humblest of opinions, I think this game is not that replayable. It's just not as interesting and exciting as OG Half-Life. It's more Half-Life, which is not a bad thing. But for me, this game is not as interesting as Half-Life. OG Half-Life for me to replay it. I mean, for crying out loud, I played Half-Life like four times already. There's a reason I replayed Half-Life four times. <laughs> At least, music for this game is actually quite nice, I must say. Next, we are going to take a look at Half-Life Blue Shift. Blue Shift is... Hmm, uh, well, um, uh, verily, uh... Um, uh, it's mid. Okay, listen, as much as it pays me to call a Half-Life game mid, it, it is mid. This game is such a nothing burger, to be honest. Here, the problem of a game being more ga of the same thing, you know, being more game, it actually hurts this one. It actually hurt this one. Really isn't any different or special compared to the other two doesn't stand up as its own thing and as a result this game is quite forgettable. In terms of gameplay, we do have some small things going around here. For example, Calhoun doesn't use power up military vests or whatever Shepard uses. Calhoun has to resort to finding uniforms left behind by other security guards, probably because they're dead. It's a nice change of pace too, and they even tease you with an HEV station despite the fact that you cannot use it at all. We have this bitch ass Rosenberg that talks too much. Like goddamn, just get to the point. Oh god, an escort mission? Ugh. After that bullshit we go in a fetch quest! Uh -huh. Guys, relax, I found a way to beat this in 3 minutes. Watch and learn. Boom, that's it. Give me the war record now. Zen is shit and that's all I have to say. I just don't want to waste my breath talking about the same thing thrice. And in terms of boss fights, these two marine soldiers ain't gonna cut it. Remember how Gordon Freeman had to fight Jimmy Neutron High on Helium and Adrian, a giant ass worm, twice? What the hell were they thinking with this? As an expansion pack, there's absolutely nothing new in this game apart from a few select areas that we haven't seen before, which is like the bare minimum. There's no new weapons or anything fancy like that. In fact, I think we have less weapons than OG Half-Life. The only thing that I can think of is the HD pack, but honestly I doubt anyone gives a shit about the HD pack since it's not even HD, just a remake of character models that honestly these, ver these versions look like shit. Maybe it was impressive at the time, but this is 2024, and while I hate judging the game like this, and instead, you know, I like judging the game in the time period this uh, was released, I never really liked the HD models, and from the looks of it, everyone seems to share the same sentiment. Uh, don't worry, this game is not even worth the replay. It's honestly just more Half-Life, sure, but there's barely anything interesting in this game. Well, uh, if you like characters that talk a lot, or should I say that love to yap, then I guess this game is for you. What, you thought I was gonna glaze past Half-Life Source? Boom, fuck this game! It's not even a fucking expansion pack, but you know what? I'm just going to get straight to it. <laughs> this is anything but a remake of the original. I can't even call this a remaster since it does the bare minimum. It's even, it's even then, that's still not enough. I, 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 I don't understand how anyone at Valve thought this was okay to launch to the public. I mean, hello, do you realize the state that this game is? I get that it wasn't like this when it launched, but they didn't even bother to update this game after they like made updates to their engine. Like, come on, dude, man. The only redeemable part about this marijuana infested crack shit as of a game is the ragdoll physics. Because, 
Ragdoll physics. And they're, they're actually kind of funny, I'm not gonna lie. For fuck's sake, even Bob doesn't care one iota about this game. They were like, yippee, 25 years since Half-Life released. Oh, then don't worry about Half-Life Store, since none gives a shit. We'll just push OG Half-Life in front of our customers for more than this piece of toy. <sighs> It really makes me wonder what the point of this game was. I'm pretty sure this was a way to test some features, like the flashlight, which is an actual flashlight, I must say. The chapter selection, and the life background to the main menu, you know, quality of life features. Even though they remind me more of a better game that I could cover right now. The ragdoll physics, obviously, and so on and so forth. Still, it's baffling that this game was sold at the same price as the original Half-Life for god knows how long. Like, I'm sorry. No, you can't do that. that no, that's, that's fucking illegal, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's everything related to Half-Life 1. Oh, that's a lot of Half-Life 1. You might be wondering why you say Half-Life 1. Because oh, we're going to start talking about Half-Life 2. Oh, hey, it's right there. Well, in the meantime, uh, I have a video to prepare about Half-Life 2. So, while you guys wait for that, have an amazing day.